Hello, one today is Thursday, February 9, 2023. And this is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. What are we talking about? Well, obviously, current market conditions. I'll have a plethora of things to say about that. Your questions on trading, your favorite stock and crypto picks. Uh, hang on to your stock and crypto picks until we get to the live charts and then ask away. And then also, if you don't mind, just hit carriage return. What do they call it nowadays? Enter? <laughs> uh, hit enter after each one so I know that I've covered it. Uh, I can delete them as it go for your benefit, obviously. So a couple things tonight. Uh, is it no longer 1999 in crypto? And I was uh, pretty excited about crypto just a few days ago. And now I may have changed my tune. We'll get to that. I want to do an intraday trading brief update once again. Last time we did an update, I, I was failing miserably, and we'll see how, how I've done since, and uh, some thoughts on that. And then one thing I kind of ran out of time at doing, and that's kind of part of the all this trading, is like it's taking away time, you know? But uh, one thing that I wanted to do was show you some of the things that I took today and what to look for, and I'm gonna get to that over time. And I'm not just showing you this stuff, I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm doing. Um, and then we'll figure out whether or not it's worth it. Now, last week I said a TFM 10% buy signal was imminent, but check back often. With today's weakness, nothing really changes, but any additional weakness could change that fairly quickly. There's a slam screen, as you know, you lose money trading, or as I often sum it up, all predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then, barring that line from my buddy Greg Morris. All right, let's talk about the intraday trend trading experiment. Uh, when we left off last Friday or last Thursday, I should say, uh, I had, I puked. <laughs> it went pretty, uh, things went south fast. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute and some of the things that uh, I'm learning in the process. But anyway, we go back to Friday. Now, Friday, the market tried to rally and came back in. And I tried to play a lot of gamma type of plays with, with options, short-term dated uh, Friday ending, ending options. And I'm not happy I lost 363, but I'm really not that upset because I was sort of positioned to make a lot of money if the market would have gone one way or the other. But still, it's it's a loss nonetheless and nothing that I'm really too excited about. Now, on Monday, the market chopped back and forth, and I'm actually pretty happy that I ended up relatively unscathed. Well, I actually made a profit of 30 cents. So that's much better than a poke in the eye. Now, the reason I'm glad about that is because I just took it easy. There was nothing to do. Notice that the market just chopped sideways. And so I mostly sat on my hands. It looked like it was going to sell off. And then it looked like it was going to reverse that little bit of a gap we had down. And then it just chopped sideways and did a little fake outs and shake outs along the way. By the way, one thing that I do, once these ranges begin to establish themselves, I'll draw a line below this low and a line, let's say below this high, and if the market stays within that range for the rest of the day, I will work very hard to sit on my hands. Now, Wednesday was a cray-cray day. I don't know if it was announced that the Fed was going to make an announcement or, or if it was an off-the-cuff thing. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments or let me know here if you're here live tonight. But the market just went absolutely crazy, kind of started flat. It began to rally a little bit. I actually got long and scratched out, and had I stuck with things, I might have really did really incredibly well on that one position, but overall, I did okay. And it was a day where you had to really be careful not to chase your own tail because it sure looked like initially there was like a little bit of a sell off, and then it sort of taken off. And the 30 minute chart really doesn't do it justice. It was all over the place. And you had to be really, really careful by not, again, chasing your own tail, like buying and then selling and shorting and buying and it, it really could have made you nuts, I think, if you let it. And and, and I'm going to get into the mental aspect of a lot of this stuff, too. Brian says it was off the cuff. Yeah, because I didn't see anything that was scheduled for Wednesday. And then all of a sudden, the market goes nuts. And I'm like, WTF. Now, on what day was that? I guess that was Tuesday that happened. So Wednesday, you can see the market sold off a little bit, bounced a little, and then kind of drifted lower. It was 267, and it was better than the poke in the eye. And then today we had the nice little gap open, 
it tried to sell off. It didn't really get going. And then all of a sudden, it just sort of worked its way lower for the rest of the day. So when it becomes a bit of a rounce type of day like this, starting at one end and ending in the other, yeah, I do okay in a day like today. Now, last week when I puked it up on Thursday, it was a $1,900 and change or whatever loss, okay? And that's a pretty big hit, obviously. And part of that was because I stepped on the gas a little bit, thinking that I, uh, I was talking to one of you guys earlier today. It's kind of like you do really, really well, and you think you got to figure it out. And like Linda Rasky said in her book, Trading Sardines, right when you figure out the key to the markets, they change a lot. So I need to be really careful on, about stepping on the gas again. And by stepping on the gas, involving more than one account in this uh, experiment. Now here's what the what the chart looks like. One thing that I can kind of glean here, if we count the days, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 12, 13, 14, 15. You know, so you've got almost three weeks in here of of underwaterness, if that's a word, if that's a <laughs> way of saying it, or drawdown, I should say. And all the time I'm spending looking at the screens, am I way could that time be spent elsewhere? And then lately the 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 shiz coins have been taking an inordinate, inordinate amount of my time. So is it worth a couple of thoughts from last week and then a, a few from, from this week? And yes, and well, maybe if I let the market come to me, it's kind of hard to recover from getting spanked a little bit because that money is gone forever. It's not like when you're position trading and you get hit kind of hard one day, the whole market kind of goes down, but you're a long ways away from your stop. And the next day it comes back, all of that, and then some. Once your day is over, your day is done, and that money is gone forever. And it, and psychologically, it can kind of weigh on you a little bit. Now, obviously, if you have a good day, that that helps too. And you got to learn to kind of temper your emotions a little bit. But one thing I've been writing about a lot lately is letting the market come to you. And when when we hit a day like today, and today wasn't wasn't unbelievably fantastic. It wasn't as easy as it might look at the end of the day. But when we, we hit one of those route days, I can trade and I can do really, really well. It's just the chop in between. Now, if it's a little narrow choppy day, I could I could do good too. I could stay out of the way. So that's part of the getting to those those uh what is this? Mahaley, Mahaley Chizinski or something like that. Um he wrote about flow and I just butchered his name, but it's about that long. <laughs> Once you, Mihaly, oh, I'm gonna, it's, I'm gonna ruin it. But anyway, he talks about getting into flow, and and I think that every now and then we can get into flow with the markets, and that's when you, you can sort of do no wrong. You have to be careful. You you can step on the gas when that happens a little bit, but you got to be really really careful. And that's kind of like one of these psychological lessons that's coming from all this which I think is making my my writing on the on the book I've been working on forever, but the, now that I'm kind of getting serious about it, it's making that writing so much better because what might take six weeks or six months to to live through, you're living through that in one day. You're living through, uh, uh, you know, the ups and downs. Now, there is a stress which is mental and physical and if I if I go in a short Tesla, you know, I immediately feel the tightness in my back begin to kind of like feels like somebody's got their hand back there doing that. So that that can't be good for you. I as I often preach, I used to preach, I've preached a lot about against day trading. And I still do to some extent. If you're in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, I think you're gonna really burn yourself out. What I'm trying to do is get on board and have a trailing stop in an initial profit target in and ride whatever it is all day long. And I ran out of time today, but next week I'll show you some of these trades where I just waited for the breakout and make sure it was, it. And you never know whether it's gonna be a breakout or a fake out, but once everything kind of starts aligning, then you can get in and then you can let this, the, the orders just work and go about your life and do something else. But the stress is mental. I think we're only wired for so many decisions. And I find that it's harder, it's hard for me to go home and make decisions after a long day in the office. And it's kind of like, you know, what do you want for supper? It's like, I don't care, you know? <laughs> so 
So we went out for our anniversary, our 25th anniversary on, was it Tuesday? I think it was Tuesday. And it's kind of like, like, oh, great. I won't have to decide what I, I won't have to make the decisions on what I'm going to eat. And then if you've ever been out with a, with a woman, no, no offense if you're a woman, but you have to choose what they want to have to eat part of. And so I had to make that decisions, those decisions. And it's, and it, it just kind of hit me because I'm always thinking about trading. Right. And it just kind of hit me like, I, I'm almost, I'm almost out of my decisions. I have so many decisions to make and it's like, I'm definitely at the end of the day, I'm just out, I'm done, spent. So something to really think about. Uh, there's a huge potential to put yourself into a serious state of regret. And I'm, I'm taking careful notes and all this stuff. So, so I can flesh it out a lot more as time goes on. But like today, for instance, I'll give you an example. And, and a couple of days ago, just the opposite happened. Like today, I'm like, you know, this long Sox S position really isn't working out. And the market's really not going that low. Maybe I should just scratch it out and forget about it. And then luckily, the market began to implode. But a few days ago, I did the same exact thing. I think it was with Sox L, too. And the market took off like right after I scratched out of the position. So there's a huge potential to put yourself in a serious state of regret. Um, you know, especially if you're going long and short, sometimes you're going long, then you're going short. And before you know it, you could be like long and short at the same time or two similar markets where you shouldn't be, you should either be long or, or short. So again, there's a, there's a huge potential to put yourself in a serious state of regret where you might be wanting the market to do two, to, two different things. And, and rarely does it do one thing that you want and to, to get it to sort of, you can't manipulate it to your, your wants to where it could do two things at the same time. And hopefully that makes sense. We can flesh that out. If you have any questions, just leave them below. Ask them now live, obviously. Uh, you know, don't step on the gas because you, because you have a good run. And that's probably, I'm a little guilty of that, no matter what market I'm trading. And again, there's one of those lessons that didn't take me six months again to relearn, right? I learned it uh, last Friday or last Thursday, I should say. As I've been saying, saying yes to something means saying no to something else. Saying yes to all the decision-making means I'm saying no to decision-making when I go home. Saying I, I, I was offered a a business opportunity to do something internationally that would have been huge potentially, but it just would take, it just would decimate everything I'm doing here and would completely consume me. So I had to say no to that. So if I said yes to that, that, that would mean saying no to everything that I'm doing elsewhere and with you guys and all. So just remember that and all the motivational people tell you that because we tend to we tend to say yes too much, and 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 then that means you're actually saying no to something else. Again, I think I already said this, but there's a potential to chase your own tail, meaning you're trying to get long, and then the market goes down, and you're trying to get short. You end up in, in that Jackie Mason thing, or I guess Ozzy Man now would be a more current reference. You know, yeah, nah, yeah, you know, before you know it, you could end up in a negative spiral. And just a real quick Side note on that, the neurology, as I often say, is two times more emotional, has two times the emotional impact for a negative thing as it does a positive thing. And if you're making a lot of those just observations during the day, it's going to really kind of add up against you. So you got to really, really be cognizant of your your own psychology and all this in any trading. But especially if, you, if you're if you forced to make a lot of decisions. Um, as we've been saying, and one of you guys was either Craig or John pointed out, fractal learning, again, uh, learning a lot about markets and psychology through the process. You know, one thing I am learning, though, is what is, is. It's like, just because I think the mar market should do something doesn't mean it's going to do it. And it's been a really good lesson in what is, is. The market's going up. Why? I don't know. But look at it go up or look at it go down or look at it just chop sideways you know what? It's not my game. The market's not playing my song. I'm not going to dance along like Greg Morris. Uh, I think his blog is called Dancing with the Trend. His book was supposed to be called Dancing with the Trend, but his publisher renamed it. So that's why I guess I need to self-publish my, uh, <laughs> my book uh, because I want to name it when I want to name it. But anyway, it's like when, when you're in tune with the markets, if you're a trend follower and that market is trending, like I've been saying over and over again, 
when the market is in a route, meaning it's just going in one direction and almost straight in that direction, that's when I absolutely print money and do really well. In between that, it gets a little bit tougher. But again, my tape reading has gotten a little bit better and, and that'll probably help with other things, maybe in trading out of positions or maybe in taking a little bit, uh, squeeze a little bit extra profit target out or some sort of discretionary thing. Uh, less, less would be more. I took a, I took a ogre this morning, which was somewhat mediocre, and it put me four hundred dollars in the hole. So that number I just showed, whatever it was, I forget. I'm looking at last week's. So I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> anyway, a uh, thousand bucks or whatever would have been about four hundred dollars more had I not taken this mediocre ogre. And and I knew it was mediocre because I, I didn't announce it to you guys in the Facebook group. If I really like one, I'll throw it out there. But that's that's kind of a an interesting little lesson in psychology right there. If it's not good enough for me to to give out to the group, then why am I taking it myself? Now, in some cases, if something is super volatile or something, and I realize that, geez, you know, a lot of people could get hurt on this, including myself, I, I won't throw it out. But if it looks good, I'll throw it out. Uh, less is more, and that's something that I really need to work on figuring out. And that's going to be like when I had that 30 cent day where I only made one or two trades and scratched out, I felt really good about that choppy day, even though I didn't have any a lot more money in my bank account. But I felt like, you know, I did the right thing by mostly sitting on my hands. I took a couple stabs, but that was it. So I got to figure out how to do less and less and less and less and less when it comes. To the trading. So anyway, a lot of uh, psychological things going back and forth there. In the uh, any questions on any of that stuff? And I promise you, I'll, I'll show you more and more live trades here soon. I told the story in my. Um, I think I might probably tell you guys before too, but I, I told in my stock chart show. I'll just so I'll just kind of go through it briefly. Usually at a dinner party or a cocktail party, somebody will ask me, "What exactly do you do?" And I used to go through this long kind of. <laughs> diatribe, if that's a, is that a word, uh, of what I do and talk about psychology and money management and technical analysis and all. And, you know, my wife's like, well, why you got to be so weird? You know, it's like, well, I'm not being weird. I'm just, this is, I'm trying to explain exactly what I do. And then one night I was asked that again, and I could see my wife's, Marcy's eyes kind of glaze over. She kind of started rolling her eyes a little bit. And so I looked at our guests and I just said, I just buy things that go up and sell things that go down. And then after the dinner, Marcy was like, thank you. You know, so it's like, okay, well, that's a much easier way of putting it. Now, the example I use in the stock chart show was crypto. And here's one I took a couple of days ago. I actually shorted this one today. But I took it a few days ago and I bought it going straight into those new highs. And then it actually continued higher and hit the initial profit target. So one way of buying things that are going higher would be to use like the 230 EMA system in crypto. And I'm going to go through this quickly because I've talked about it so much lately. But basically, you're looking for two bars of Landry light, lows greater than 30 EMA. And you're looking to get in above the high plus a little wiggle room. Now, breakout systems tend to fail more often than not, but every now and then you catch the mother of all trends and that's what makes them work. However, due to the high failure rate as a general rule, and as I've been saying lately, answering a lot of you guys' questions, is that I don't trade breakouts, but every now and then in something like crypto, when it gets really hot or any other market that gets really hot, I will get into a little bit of the breakout trading and also like the intraday stuff, you can't sit around and wait for a bow tie to form all the time. So sometimes you are stuck doing the intraday, doing the breakout stuff. But one thing cool about this system, and I know you want to party with me, and let me, my slides are a little uh, out of order, but you can see that in this particular case, if, if it would have triggered, you would have lost money, but it came back down and reset itself. So here's a case where you would not have lost money on a breakout that if you'd have just taken a breakout in and of itself without this little system, you would have lost money. But in this case, no capital was put into harm's way. Now, keep in mind, you will lose money on occasion with this or any other system for that matter. But it is kind of cool that sometimes something as simple as this little moving average filter in here requiring daylight. And when the daylight goes away, the signal resets. 
can help to keep you out of trouble. I think it was Bitcoin or one of those markets a while back. It made two or three of these false signals. And then the fourth one or whatever one, the third one, the fourth one, it, the market really took off. But you could see in this case, resets when it goes back down to zero. So bar one, bar two, and then plus a little wiggle room. So your buy would have been right here on this pair. Now, as I said in my stock chart show, I didn't actually get long all this crypto when it first started breaking out just because I wasn't paying a lot of attention to it. But now I'm starting to pay a lot of attention to it once again. But you can see down below, there's one, two little green bars if you squint your eyes or just look at the chart. One, two, lows greater than moving average. That's upside Landry light. And then enter. Give it a little, give it a little wiggle room and then enter if it triggers in. Now, I ended up buying this one way up here. And what I've been doing with this crypto is going straight up is just buying it as it goes straight up and then flipping it out at half of it at 20% higher and getting a free ride on the remainder of the position. So if we zoom in a little bit, you can see I got in here and you can see if you were just playing a pure breakout, you would have gotten a little earlier. Had I seen it a couple of days earlier, I would have gotten in earlier or maybe at this point here, I was my account was, was all filled up with other positions. <laughs> What said the drive through was all filled up and I went in and get me a McRib sandwich. Anyway, 20% higher just because I'm not going to do a lot of math right now. Maybe eventually I will. In stocks, it's a little bit more complex because I'm looking at the historical volatility and I'm eyeballing and I'm gauging how much wiggle room I need to get, uh, how much room on the stop I need to give it and all that other good stuff. Here, I'm just taking 20% or I'm multiplying my entry by 1.2. For that initial profit target and that seems to work out pretty good some of these like i said in the stock chart show have went up like 50 percent overnight so my thinking is let's say it's up 20 or 30 percent already and it's going straight up well my thinking and a little bit of hope is that it might continue to go higher maybe another 20 percent higher and at least i get my initial profit target and scratch out on the rest but the ultimate goal in trading is to establish as many of those free roll positions as possible and that's exactly what i'm doing intraday by the way like what sucks s today i took profits i think at 30 cents and flipped out i think it was 500 shares and then i trailed that stop and got out close to actually got stopped out on the remainder of that late in the day anyway now last few last week and even uh earlier this week I was pretty pumped up about crypto. Why? Well, because I buy things that go up and I sell things that go down. Obviously, a little bit more complicated than that. But when a market is going straight up, sometimes you just need to do just that. But now I might be changing my tune a little bit. And you can see Bitcoin got whacked pretty hard here. I wouldn't call Bitcoin down and out just yet. As I've said quite a bit, and this isn't a tremendous base, but if you get a big, big, big fat base, and you get a sharp drop below it, you can actually buy the stock when it passes back up through that base or ideally breaks out of the base. And that'll actually test out longer term. So I would actually be a buyer of Bitcoin around, let's say 23.6, maybe getting a little bit before this peak in here. You wanna be a little bit early, but I would avoid it as long as it's imploding. In fact, I'm actually short a little bit of Bitcoin right now i do have some hodled away don't tell anybody but i do have a little hodled away <laughs> which brings up a lot of questions my wife's always asking me about it like don't worry about it <laughs> anyway so right before i went live tonight this was my these were my open short positions that i put on today and i actually went ahead and just closed them all out i'll show you how i put them on and just one second, the thinking behind them. It's kind of like the revert, we're kind of like opposite George of the of the trend trading. And ideally, what I would like to do longer term with these altcoins or shiz coins is to trade a lot like the core methodology, meaning that I got the pullback and then I put my stop at a reasonable level based on the volatility of the instrument and where I would likely be wrong and then have that initial profit target, do all that math and, and do the, all that longer term trend following type of stuff. 
as opposed to just buying the ones that are going straight up. But as long as the market is hot, then that's what I'm going to do. And today I did just the opposite. Now, this was a bit of an experiment, and it turned out pretty good. The only problem is it's it's harder to hold stuff longer term on the short side because of the retrace rallies. And I got to look at these numbers as I put this slide together, and I decided just go ahead and cash out. Not, be, not bad for one day's experiment with this stuff. And then if they continue to, to stay weak, I'm, I might look to kind of work my way into more short positions once again. So anyway, you could see, like here's one that has begun to fail and I'm short that one. And then here's what the, it looks like on the 30 minute chart. So if we back the chart up, you can see there's really no pattern there that would tell me to short this market. But when I'm looking at a 30 minute chart, I'm like, okay, well this thing's getting hit pretty hard. So maybe I can get in for a, a super short term trade and see what happens. So all I was doing was I was taking a look at the, the list of instruments here. And just like I would buy the strongest ones or, or try to buy the strongest ones with some caveats, on the upside, on the downside, what I was doing is I would start with the worst in the list, and then I would check the 30-minute chart. Now, in this case, I got in earlier in the day, so probably somewhere around 165 or wherever that was. You can go back and look at the actual slide with all the trades to see where I got in all those trades and then wrote it down. Now, I did have a few little losses earlier in the day to add in with those gains. I don't make it look like I just had 10 winning trades or however many it was. I did have a few losses early on, and then when the market began, when the stock market began to crash, crypto began to crash too. And that's the thing. It's like the, the correlation between the assets is pretty amazing, and I think it's because it's just markets are markets, and what happens is when when risk comes off or people start selling stocks people just start selling everything so unfortunately i was kind of hoping that crypto as i've said before could trade independently of stocks and i could make a lot of money when crypto's hot in the in the stock market's not and doing a bear market or whatever but obviously the markets are very very correlated and that's something that i've shown quite a few times in graphs and um, Greg Schnell talked a lot about that in the uh, chart con. And, and he's actually was was bullish on Bitcoin, but he was waiting on the S and P to to take off. And he was uh, certainly right in that call. So kudos to him on that. So just uh, real quick, the the secret sauce, as I often say, and I thought everybody knew this, but I was on a project. This is kind of a long story. How do I make it? not long story endless, but I was on a project with a bunch of um, a bunch of brainiacs. And one in particular was running a hedge fund that did arbitrage with Forex. And he was in charge of tracking our results. And the results were, were pretty phenomenal. And the project didn't last, unfortunately, but it, the results were just amazing. And I went into this thing, actually told the, the, the guy who got me into it that, look, I might not be your guy. And he said, he says, look, Dave, you're exactly our guy. Don't invent trades because we would get paid based on the trades that we would submit. If we didn't submit anything, they didn't pay us to sit on our hands, okay? And uh, so I waited and waited and waited. It took me a few weeks, but then all of a sudden everything lined up and I just started nailing these trades. And uh, one, of my pitch me moment, one of my pitch me moments of my life, if not the pitch me moment of my life, is when I met Larry McMillan in person and he goes he goes I said hey I'm Dave and he goes I know you are it's like you were on fire doing that project and, and all I did was wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and then long story endless I tell you <laughs> what I would do is I'd go in with a swing trade stop and I'd take a swing trade profit and then I'd trail that stop and I'd widen it out and uh Jan who was the, the hedge fund manager who was tracking us he actually said in one of the meetings to everyone, which was really nice, he said, it's really cool what Dave's doing. I like what he's doing, the way he's he's opening up that volatility to ride out a longer term trend. And it made me feel great. And I, I didn't, I thought everybody knew that, like Pinocchio being a bad motivational speaker and Kenny Rogers being a pain in the ass to play cards with. <laughs>
But anyway, so no one can predict the future. The secret sauce, and you can only look so far out in markets, by the way, is taking partial profits in case you're only partially right and loosening stops to ride out longer term trends in case you're right big. Now, I talked about this. This comes straight from trading full circle, but I talked about this in yesterday's stock chart show, which was recorded the day before. And these were my free rolls in crypto. I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I might have gone up to as many as a dozen. So my ultimate goal was to ride all of these pairs for as long as they moved in my favor. And as you can see that this one up here was up 50% overnight. And I remember waking up on that morning, whatever it was, Tuesday morning, and it was up actually 65%. But the bloom, like I said, might be off the rose, at least for now. All these things are correcting pretty sharply. In fact, this RNDR, which I was free rolling on, I actually shorted that one today. I did lift that trade though. Like I said, I lifted them all. Except for, uh, I stayed short Bitcoin. I just didn't want to, I didn't want all the stress and, and it's just a new system, new markets uh, in this particular case, the shorting especially. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to risk it and then be watching the screen while I'm trying to do this presentation at all. So I just shut it all down. And if I'm that great, I could I could do it again tomorrow, right? All right, just a quick update on the 10% system. The as you can see, the this is underneath it, but this is the buy line here, and it's based on a 50 week closing high, and it's 10% below that. And again, I know you guys know this, but my thinking for anybody watching the video is that if a market loses 10% of its value, if, it's, if a market is going to lose 50% of its value, it's going to lose 10% first. So you might want to think about getting out. So the sell is a drop below the buy line, a close below the buy line, I should say, and a close below the 50-week moving average. 50-week moving average is a whipsaw filter. So you can see the buy line sort of coming down. So when it's sort of dropping back here, that means that it's been 50 weeks it's looking back 50 weeks and then the highs, the closing highs sort of drop. And so the, the line started coming down. Inadvertently, I built all this lag into the system. And it actually works out pretty good when you get into a longer term kind of process type of bottom in the market versus an event type of bottom. And lately, that's what we've been having is obviously a process bottom. And I'll talk about that when we get to live charts. But the reason I want to show you this one zoomed in is we need two bars of Landry light. And if you look down here, this one green bar here means the low is greater than the 50 week moving average. So as early as next Friday, we could have a buy signal in this. So that's kind of cool. I know you want to party with me, but that's pretty cool. All right, the VIX earlier today, I, I did start working on the slides earlier a little bit today, and I was going to say that the VIX, nothing nothing much yet, and then the VIX took off by the end of the day. So the VIX is actually at 9.44% away from the 10 simple moving average, okay? So if we get stretched more than 10%, start looking for a pop-up in stocks. So the correction... Uh, based on this, at least, it's kind of started a little bit today, but let's see what happens uh, tomorrow and the next day or whatever. Let's see if we get really stretched in this VIX and then see what happens. And this dates way back to my work, a lot of the work I did with Larry Connors, and it helped him develop. Uh, he had some VIX systems to begin with, and then he explained to me how the VIX worked, and then I took the ball and kind of ran with it and helped him develop some, some new VIX stuff. But uh, 10%. As a general rule, away from the moving average above or below is an area where you want to start looking for a reversion. Now, these extra lines I added in here are lows and highs and opens. Do I have the open in here? I don't know if I have the open. Yeah, I have the open too. So my thinking there was to possibly use it for some intraday stuff. And the other thing too is I'm not a big fan of trading a, a pure short-term system like multi-day system. And that's why I hang on to these longer-term winners as long as I can until I'm stopped out on the swing trades because you're going to have to have something open-ended to make a lot of money, some sort of home run every now and then. 
Otherwise, you're not going to make any meaningful money as a trader. And if you're a pure short-term trader, you're going to get whacked overnight. And not that you won't get whacked with the other stuff, but at least you've got that potential home run to help you out. Okay. And sometimes one of those home runs might get whacked, but you'll you'll walk away with thirty thousand instead of forty thousand dollars on a hundred k account or something. And you know what? You'll live to fight another day. But if you get whacked twenty thousand or even ten thousand overnight in a short term trade where you only make a couple thousand over a few days that's going to hurt a lot more so you need that open-ended aspect no matter what type of trading that you're doing but anyway we could get a signal here and i don't take the signals again in and of themselves that's the point i'm trying to make but what i might do is if i see some sort of stretch in the vix i might look for some sort of reversal in the market or maybe some sort of reversal in the VIX in and of itself on an intraday basis. All right, let's hop into the live crypto charts. And if you guys want to ask about any individual crypto pairs, you can do so now. And let me get my charts switched over. Okay, so let me show you a couple things here. So again, you want to you want to sort them by relative strength, and this is just a percent change overnight. And a lot of times, you can just come in here and look to buy the strongest, as I've been saying quite a bit, with a few caveats, like that one right there. You can tell. Like I've been saying recently, well, all these long tails suggest this thing is really thin. So you probably want to stay away from that one. You can see maybe in a case like this, you can trade it more like the core methodology, looking to trade this deep pullback. So it could be kind of interesting now that we've got a little bit of correction happening. All these high things, I don't understand them. I think it's like pictures of digital cats or something, and one of them, is uh, based on the moon phase or something. So even I'm going to say that's stupid. <laughs> but you can see a lot of these ones that I was short earlier, and this is why I just wanted to uh, get out of the shorts and let things shake out a little bit. But all these deep pullbacks could be worth taking as possible trades. And if you want to get aggressive, maybe go in and look to buy a little bit early and and see if the reversion to the mean type of move continues. But you can see lots and lots of pullbacks. So this is where the core methodology might be able to kick back in. And there was one earlier I was looking at, and it was a TKO, and it's going to probably be way down the list. But if something shows up, I'll, I'll point it out. Any uh, any pairs you guys want to look at? Obviously, we need to take a look at uh, Bitcoin real quick on a live chart and see what's happening. But like that, um, I don't know if I played this one or not, but this is the type of stuff could happen. You could buy them and going straight up, and then you could flip them out 50% higher or whatever, or at least 20% higher. Okay, Metis, all right, we'll take a look at that, that one, John. So again, we're seeing lots and lots of, uh, so we might just go back to core methodology with these things. Now, the whole point I'm trying to make, and I wish I'd have made it earlier because I don't know if people are gonna make it this far into the YouTube, <laughs> but the whole point I was trying to make and making recently is that markets are markets, okay? So it shouldn't really matter what your markets are. And it doesn't matter what these shit coins are doing, okay? Here's another one that looks kind of interesting. I take a short of this one earlier today, too, but now it's bouncing a little bit. So he wants to take a look at Metis. Yeah, that one looks kind of interesting. We do have this this long tail day over there. I don't know if that's an aberration or not, but that that's a little scary. But yeah, John, I like I like the way that one looks. That's kind of interesting. So I agree with you on that one. Ipar is that a is that a stock or is that a uh, is that a crypto? Probably a stock, right? Please ignore a stock. Okay, no problem. We'll take a look at that in one second. 
Any more uh, crypto pairs you guys want to look at? Now, sometimes, again, you can do kind of opposite, George, and, and just short the ones that are kind of imploding in here. And then check the, check the um, like this one's kind, this one looks kind of choppy, but that would be a short, that would be something that I was short. Let me see if I could, uh, let me see if I could short it. I don't think it's, um, I always joke about that one. It's going to ruin your account. Oh yeah, I can short. All right, so let me let's just see with the the this thirty minute chart. See there I go, you know, doing these webinars and <laughs> yeah, it looks kind of choppy. I kind of fit a choppy, so probably need to be careful with that. But that looks like something that I would that would short. Oh, it's killing me. <laughs> let me just short a little bit for S and Gs. All right, market. Let's see. How much is that? Let's see. Talk amongst yourselves. I don't know why I have to make a trade every <laughs> every show. All right, we'll go. Uh, 700. So short. Okay, so we're short the throne. And where do we get filled? We got filled at 167. Wow, no, 160, 1.67. Okay, so let's see what happens with that one. So now I'm trying to just make a quick example here. I probably wouldn't have taken it um, just because it looked like it was kind of thin, but I thought it'd be kind of a fun thing to do. And again, you want to part of me, 167. Let's just see, we'll check it at the end of the show. Somebody reminds me, 160, 1.6, that can't be right. So we're in the money already? No, it can't be right. 1.669, 1 1.66, 1 oh, a little lower, 1.6. Okay. All right, so let's see what happens. Oh, $2, I'm up $2. <laughs> Yay. I probably shouldn't look at too many more of these because I'm gonna get in trouble. But you can see, you can kind of do just the opposite of of the the buying the things that go up. That one looks a little thin, so we'll leave that alone. And a lot of these, you can't short them. Okay, let's go ahead and shift gears and get into stocks. Oh, that looks good, ALCX. See, that looks like one that's in trouble. Let's see. I promise I won't do this all night. <laughs> no, I can't. I, that one doesn't look like it's available to short. Uh, CVC, USD. Yeah, that one looks a little thin. Okay, let's go ahead and shift gears and we'll go to stocks. And any questions on anything thus far? We'll go with stocks. So there's the VIX chart. Let me just show you something real quick. So if we're looking at, this is something I talked about a few weeks ago. So if you're looking at these four charts here, these are 30 minute charts. And obviously you won't know to the end of the day, but during the day, like like this day here, that looked like a good day to be long lab D. And I'd be willing to bet, I don't have it handy, but I'd be willing to bet I was long lab D yesterday. But that's one thing you could do is just look at these. I like these four in particular and they're inverse. And it's kind of like my baseline. And it's like if the, like the SOX ass starts breaking out a little bit from these low levels, it might be worth a shot. And you can see like the J dust. I played this one today, and you can see that it's kind of breaking out above multi-month highs, and it had nice range to it. That's the other thing I'm looking at too, and I've talked about this before, is I'm looking at the the intraday range, and ideally I want a, at least 50% range or more before I'm looking to get in something. So I'm willing to give up that first move because a lot of times you'll get faked out a lot. And again, nothing I'm doing is proprietary, and I'll share more and more with you. 
um, as time allows and as I prove it myself. Let's take a look at the overall market here. S&P 500 got whacked a little bit. As you can see, not the end of the world. One thing that's a slight bummer is we did pull back below these prior little peaks in here. So that's kind of interesting. Hopefully, a word you should never use in this business, we don't pull back much further. Now, the market's been taking its own sweet time about bottoming, and that's fine with me because it allows me time to, to get some trades off. When you have a V-shaped bottom, by the time you get your trades on, it's like they, they last a little while, then they're done. When you have these gradual, longer-term bottoms like this, you have a chance to go in and out and quite a few stocks and position yourself. And then when the real move does work or does happen or follow through, you're free rolling on a lot of positions and you can uh, do really well. Bonds, you can see outside day down. We're almost an outside day down, but opening gap reversal down. Uh, what was that? I already forgotten about the stock. Um, see, that, that's that's a sign of that's a good sign, right? I've already forgotten about the stock I lost money on today. <laughs> but I was going to show you that as an example of, of some things that just weren't quite there. And I'll do it next week, I promise. Dollar had an opening gap reversal. Dollar's still in a downtrend, but it's been bouncing a little bit as of late. And that's kind of been uh, who pointed it out to me. Craig pointed out that Keller called it a wrecking ball. And that song will be in my head for a while. <laughs> but um, it can kind of muck with the markets a little bit, muck up things a little. Let's take a look at retail while we're here. Outside day down in retail. So far, though, it's been a pretty good run. At least base is the XRT. So that's pretty good looking. Um, I guess that's an ETF. Huh? Yeah, it's an ETF. So that looks pretty good. I'm not seeing a whole lot of retail set up, though. It's kind of interesting. Sometimes you have stocks that are choppy, and then the index could kind of smooth it all out. So this would be something I think that would be actually, well, it's got too much overhead supply, too much overhead supply over here. But without this overhead supply, this would actually be something I think would be worth buying if it takes out uh, today's high. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ got whacked a little bit in here. Not too bad, though. It had a pretty pretty serious breakout. And you could see the it kind of bottomed out, kind of nice, slow, take its time type of bottom. And ideally, we'd like to see it stabilize somewhere in here above the 200 and then obviously turn back up. So let's keep an eye on that 200. Uh, GBTC, you can see got whacked in here. So that would be your Bitcoin. By the way, all the Bitcoin stocks got whacked. So keep an eye on those Bitcoin stocks for opening gap reversals. That's what I told my peeps earlier tonight in the service. And I recommended one and suggested another one that was a little bit more thinner and volatile. But uh, crypto stocks tomorrow. Maybe okay. If this thing, if this thing continues to just keep selling off, then um, then obviously don't take the setups, and they're not going to trigger anyway. But keep an eye on a lot of the stocks related to crypto because we could get some nice, nice, nice opening gap reversals tomorrow. Take a look at a Rusty. Rusty, another one of those big, fat, longer-term, complex head and shoulder bottoms, whatever you want to call it. Nice little run as of late above this little breakout level. Ideally, we want to stay above this breakout level. So today is not the end of the world, but we need to pay attention to see if we come right back in and get back in the soup, so to speak. Energies, energies has the energy sector has been losing money for a while, losing money, losing momentum for a while, and we've got, I guess you can call that a triple top if you want. But just be the TFM, I just draw a line sideways and you can see that we hadn't made a whole lot of progress in quite some time. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the energies, but they sure look like they've lost a lot of steam. Metals and mining on the other hand, looking pretty good. Speaking of commodities, pretty good trend in place there, pulling back a little bit of a gap there. I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Outside day down, they could really use a correction. This is another one of those areas that the stocks within really don't look fantastic, but the overall sector looks pretty darn good. Drugs, you can see, have lost quite a bit of steam in here as of late. They haven't really gone anywhere in months. If anything, they're just kind of drifting a little lower. Maybe it's a base, but I wouldn't rush out and buy drugs right now. Biotech, bit of a bummer, because it's come all the way back in after recently trying to break out a little bit, still trying to work its way higher. But now all the way back to the 50-day moving average, and if it drops much further, 
I would be concerned about that. So that's that's a little interesting, I find. Let's take a look at the semiconductors. You can see semiconductors doing pretty good in here. They actually did okay today, all things considered. In fact, they actually did up a quarter of a percent, but they've been in a pretty good run as of late. They could actually correct a little bit and uh, it'd still be in a nice trend. Okay, let's take a look at some of your picks here. Oh, I like this one. Okay. Let's uh, see. Let's see. Let's get back to a clean chart. All right, let's take a look at a daily. And let's get rid of that. Okay, so this looks pretty good. My uh, couple of concerns. First and foremost, it's um, it's a little on the thin side, okay? Initially, when I first looked at it, I really liked it, okay? Because you got a really nice trend here, a nice little pullback, and it tends to be pretty orderly. It rallies, it sells off, it rallies, sells off, rally, sells off, rally, sells off. So it's a good looking stock, okay? You back the chart way out, and you can see we've just gotten past this prior peak in here, which is okay. Now, the other thing, and this is a little counterintuitive, but if you're coming out of a bear market like we might be now, I'm more interested in like a low level crypto stock that's been left for dead and now beginning to kind of skyrocket off its lows and correcting. So some sort of transitional setup as opposed to something that has outperformed the market. These prior leaders tend to become prior laggards. Not to say that I wouldn't take a good looking stock in a nice trend like nine was a while back, for instance. But in general, I want to find something that's kind of coming off lower levels. As I often say, I want to match the pattern to the market. But as a general statement, Stuart, uh, it's a good looking stock, super thin, and then all those other things that I just said. W, W is going to be a boring stock, right? No, that's way fair. Okay, good. Okay, this is perfect. Okay, thank you, John. So I just said, I don't want to go after a stock that's at like a big high level in a bear market or coming out of bear market, but this looks kind of interesting, okay? You've got a cup and a handle. You do have some overhead supply to deal with, but that's so far away, It's um, you can live with it. The thing, you know, would be cool with this one, and you're really gonna wanna party with me if this works, but if we had, a, it could use a tiny bit more pullback, but if we had a nice gap lower tomorrow, it could be a nice little opening gap reversal. So as a general statement, this one looks pretty good. It would take me a little while longer to pick it apart, but I think it's I think it's okay. I think I'm gonna give you a high five on that one, John. Good eye. Nice work. Cabo. Cabo looks okay. Let's see. It's only forty thousand shares, fifty a little less than sixty thousand on average. So it's a little thin. But it's such a high price stock, maybe the spreads aren't too bad. It looks okay. Um, there's something that it's just the momentum is just kind of not quite there. It looks okay though. It kind of rallied up and then, yeah, I don't know. I, well, I wouldn't go after it because it's so thin. I'd try to find something a little bit thicker and more exciting, maybe like crypto. But oh, now I know what it is. Yeah, look, look right here. Like from right here to right there, okay, or up in here. It really hasn't made a whole lot of forward progress. You want to see something do like this and then pull back and look like that, okay? Oops. Oh, cab up. Okay. C A D A. Yeah, it's okay. The, you know, the, 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 it looks a little this. Trend is kind of a wonky trend in here. I, I don't, it's kind of strange the way it's it's acting. It goes up a day, down a day, up a day, down a day. Probably be great for a, <laughs> like a Taylor method, huh? It's kind of like sell short day, cover day, buy day, sell day, sell short day, buy day. But it's it's kind of a strange looking pattern. I've never seen a, a, a pattern that looked like that um maybe on a little bit more knockout move now the only thing as i kind of pick it apart a little bit 
is you can see that it's sort of that's I think that's what's bothering me so much. It's sort of rolling over in here. Let's see if I can throw a bow tie in quickly on a fly. No, it's not really in the bow ties, but it sort of looks like it's it's losing steam and rolling over. So I pass on that one. Yeah, uh, let's put the. It, it, it's kind of stealthy. It's kind of hard for me to show you, but you can see it. It's very gradual in the way it's doing this. Okay, and also let's see what's what's a net net on here. Yeah, net net. You can go quite far backwards. So there's something that's just not right about this stock, and hard to put my finger on it. I, I can see where initially it would catch your eye, though, for sure. New. Yeah, this one looks okay. Um, you know, you you you're coming up against a prior peak in here. I'm not a big fan of that. Also, it's at high levels. Everything I just said about the high level stocks, it's okay. I mean, it's a little wide and loose. It's okay, but I would find something at lower levels and not up against a prior peak in here on that one, Brian. Shop. Yeah, this looks pretty good. It's gonna have to pull back a little more. But you know this this has a makings of um, something like someone like uh, Dave Keller. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but this looks like something that he would show in his show. It's kind of like a big, huge picture base in a stock. So this stock probably has super longer term potential. I mean, it's a little wide and loose, but when you back it way out, you can see it's kind of got that cup and handle look to it. And it's had a pretty good thrust in here. It needs a little bit more pullback because now it's it's not so much a, a transitional pattern anymore. But on a little bit more pullback, I would I would think about that one for sure. Boy, an opening gap reversal would be a godsend here, huh? Look at that, 17 million. So it's plenty, 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 plenty of volume. 20 million on average, 21 million on average actually. So yeah, um, good job on that one. A little bit more pullback. IMVT. Oops. One charting package I just punched in the symbol. This one I have to put in a uh no, no, I don't I don't like this one. And and even though it went a long ways, notice how it went up and then it kind of went this way. And then you know we're sideways in here. It just doesn't really jump out at me as something I want to go after. And you know, I know it's a long time ago, but when you get these huge gaps and implosions, it can affect a stock. Not that I would never trade a stock based on what's happened over the last three months or six months or whatever, and not worry about something way back in time. But I do tend to, especially if I'm picking something apart a little bit, like I did this one, I'll go back in time and take a look. Harry, yeah, this looks good. This looks pretty good. Volume's okay. You know, we're up against brand new highs and longer term it's wide and loose as you can see and it's also it's really outperformed the overall market so a stock like this it's a little on a, it's not like a thick thick stock that this would be more likely to happen with but as a general statement a stock that's been really strong for a long time especially in the bear market can become a source of funds and that's kind of the point i'm getting to getting at i should say Okay, MTLS, MTLS. This one's okay, but it's kind of jumping out. The overhead supply is jumping out at me. And the volume, and as I've been saying quite a bit lately, it seems like it seems like nowadays it takes a little bit more volume to trade a stock. For instance, years ago, like a hundred thousand shares on average seemed to be plenty enough to trade. But nowadays, it seems the spreads are a little wider on stocks that even have a lot more volume. So I'd be really skeptical based on the volume. Be careful with it. And you've got you got a lot of overhead supply. I know that's a ways away. It'd be a good problem to have. But you'd hit a little here, and then you got a lot there. I I would just pass on that. Yeah, and then you're gonna you're gonna have a, an uphill battle the whole way. You know, take a look at like that. That shop looked pretty good. I'm gonna have to make sure that's on my minimum list. You know, when you're looking at this thing much longer term, it does have a few bad memories, but not as bad as, as that one. And then we did Perry. Okay, any more? 
So I'm up four dollars and twenty cents on the uh, whatever I shorted earlier. I really forgotten what it was. It was a uh, rune, R U N E. I always make the joke. I hope it doesn't ruin my account. Uh, M R K. That's Merck. Okay, I like the way you think. All right, all right, perfect. Who brought that up, Stuart? Thank you, Stuart. Okay, this is beautiful. Now the 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 H V is a little low, and that's where it gets a little tricky. But in a big thick stock like this, you could you could trade them down with a little bit lower H V. Now, I don't like Merck because it's a big thick stock and it's not very inefficient as a general statement. It doesn't really make that big of a move, at least not to my liking, okay? However, you could find inefficiencies and efficient stocks, okay? My whole my whole job is to find inefficiencies, that little uh, shiz coin or whatever that's gonna go up 65% overnight, that's inefficient, okay? The, the stock at low levels that begins to take off and doubles and triples or quadruples or whatever, that's inefficient. That's inefficiency because that move was not priced in. Our whole job is to seek out inefficiency. Whenever someone in my industry talks about inefficiencies, my, uh, my ears perk up and I listen. Now, with that said, sometimes efficient stocks can make inefficient moves. And that's why the ogre is kind of just the opposite, the open gap reversal. It's kind of just the opposite of what I'm looking for in a position trade that I would take because I want something that's going to be inefficient in, in a sense that it can make a very huge move over a fairly short period of time and everything's not priced in. But the flip side is with something like an ogre, open gap reversal or shorts. If you ever look at the shorts that I short, in the service, they're big, thick stocks, usually kind of stodgy type of stocks, and this would be this would be one of them. And there's no, there's not much support here. There's a little bit, but not much. So you'd have a pretty good ride down to about 94. That's only 14 points. I guess that's better than the poke in the eye. So, and then the short side is is tougher. But if this thing doesn't open a gap reversal to the downside, it could it could be a good day trade. Um, this could be a possible short. So I'll give you a high five on that, Stuart, as a possible short. Good eye. I mean, I like the way you think. So yeah, this this stock could um, could definitely be in trouble, but you're only looking at about 14 points, which, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> you taught me. Oh, well, thank you, Stuart. I appreciate that. LLY. Yeah, I was um, actually wrote this morning. Uh, not as good as Merck. Uh, too much, too much um, stuff underneath it. It used to kind of irk me when, when this is gonna sound vain, but it used to kind of irk me when, um, when I would teach things and people would take it and they'd go apply it to stocks and sometimes other markets or whatever, and do really, really well with what I did, what I taught or whatever. Sometimes better than me, and I uh, just was giving a speech once in New Orleans to this group, and it just, it just kind of popped in my head. It's like, it's like you know, it's like somebody stole, stole my bike off the front porch as a kid, and then they rode around the block, and when they got in front of my house, they popped the wheelie, you know. And and that's the way I used to kind of feel about it, but now it's kind of like it, it's a, it's a total different feeling. Now I'm a little bit older, it's kind of like, hey, nice wheelie, you know, so <laughs> nice wheelie there, Stuart. But yeah, Merck for sure, Lily, no, I pass on Lily for sure on Lily. All right, anything else? I'm up two dollars and eighty cents. I need to decide whether or not I'm gonna close that one out or not. I might let it ride. Well, while we're in impasse, I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. Anything unanswered, bring it up in Facebook. We'll noodle it there. And if you're not in Facebook, you can leave a comment below or you can reach me at DaveLearner.com slash contact. If you want to come to these webinars live almost every week, Thursdays, six central. And go to DaveLearner.com slash webinar to register. Thanks again, everybody. And if you're watching this on Facebook, please like it. And if you don't like it, go have no fun somewhere else. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Great weekend. Have a great weekend. And may the trend be with you.